So be think means to remember, right? So if you got a nation of people that has to bethink themselves or remember who they are, meaning that they forgot, what do you think that group of people would have put down on their job application for their ethnicity? Who they are. Now that they, they forgot, they don't remember. So if you don't remember who you are, other. you put down other. You see that? Bring it up. You right. see that? All right. But the people that got to call themselves other, they got to be think themselves, according to the Bible, are called what? Israelites. Israelites. So next time, next time, if there's a section that says Israel, you'll be able to check that because you know the only people that will select other according to the Bible are the Israelites because they forgot who they were. They forgot who they were. You remember the prophet Jeremiah? Let me show you what, that, what happened to, to the prophet Jeremiah. I know you got to go. I know you got to go. I just want you to know that even the prophet Jeremiah had to select other on his job application. But he got to remember who he is too. Come back up. Boy. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself. So the Bible says thou, talking about Jeremiah, even thyself shall what? Shall discontinue from thine heritage. The mighty prophet Jeremiah would even discontinue from his heritage. So he's here in America right now. And before he understood and it was explained to him that he's an Israelite, when Jeremiah fills out a job application, he had to select other. Right. But the beauty about all of this is you got an opportunity to return back to your heritage now. That's right. You got an opportunity to understand that shouldn't you you're not a, a Negro, you're not other, you're not black. You an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's right. And there's a responsibility that comes along with understanding your nationality as an Israelite. I'm going to show it to you real fast while you're pulling off. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Because being an Israelite is my brother right here. My brother right here with the, with the pants sack. My brother. Do you understand that you're an Israelite? Yeah. You do. There's a responsibility that comes along with knowing that you're an Israelite. It's bigger than just checking a different box on a job application. Hey, look, my brother, right? put the cigarette out and listen to me real quick. I want to build with you. Put the, put the cigarette down so I can build with you. Respect the word of God, man. All right, let's build. Let's build. This, this is what we're going to build on. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So the Bible says Israel, which you understand is speaking about you, right? And you just learned today that it's speaking about you as well. The question is, what does the Lord require of the Israelites? Your one. What does God require from the Israelites? Do you know? All right, we're going to read it to you. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. We must learn to fear the Lord our God. So we got to acknowledge he's not just God. Whose God is he? Our God. Our God. He's nobody else's God. He's only the God of the Israelites. Right. That's right. So this whole time we thought we was learning about God. They was teaching us a false God that loves everybody. Right. There is no God that loves everybody. Because right. the God of the Bible, the God of the Israelites, is only the God of the Israelites. That's right. He's not the God of the Chinese, the Japanese, the white man, the Arab man. Right. He's only our God. And guess who we look like? We look just like him. Right. We look exactly like him. Read on. Right. To walk in all his ways. We got to learn to walk in all the ways of our God. Right. Do not the Arabs walk in the ways of their God? Don't they got their own book? Don't they got their own celebrations? Don't they got the Quran? They got Ramadan. They got all of it. They take the pilgrimage, the Hajj to Mecca. Right. Don't they got all those things? We got our own things for our God too. Right. The white man got his own God. It looks just like him. But you know what? They took the name of our God, our leader, our teacher, and they put it on their God. Their God is Satan. Everything that they do that they taught us came directly from Satan. But they don't call their God Satan. You know who they call their God? Who does the white man call his God? That's exactly who they call their God. But he's not their God. Because look, their Jesus looks like this. You see this picture right here? True. Bring it up. Huh? True indeed. True indeed. But what does the real Jesus Christ look like? Bring it up. Skin. She look like you. There you go. There you go. But so we got to learn to walk in all the ways of our God, of our leaders, of our angels, of our heavenly father. Right. 
Right? Because we learn to walk in all the ways of this man right here. Who? Do you see the high grad being a black man? No. He's got melanin in his skin, but we are not the same people. He descends from Ishmael. We descend from Isaac and Jacob. God made a covenant with Isaac and Jacob. God did not make a covenant with Ishmael and his descendants. All right? So we are a completely different nation of people. Completely different nation of people. Let's finish up Deuteronomy chapter 10. Do you follow Islam? I have knowledge yourself. What does that mean? I'm familiar with a lot of things. Okay, all right. But you said you got knowledge yourself. When I asked you who you are, you said that you were what? You didn't say you were an Arab. No, you you said that you were Israel. No, I'm not. I'm not Israel. You're not Israel? No. I asked you if you understood you were an Israelite, and you said yes. That means you are. To so say you are an Israelite means that you are Israel. Israel. Right, that's you. So this Bible is talking about you right here. Hey, my brother right here, what we're going over right now is what our true nationality is and what God requires of us. Right. Has anybody explained to you that you're an Israelite before? No, I ain't know said that. Nobody ever said that? No. All right, so what, what we're doing right now, we're going over what God requires of his chosen people. He has one chosen people, one nation that he chose to be above everybody else, and that nation is called the nation of Israel. So can you speak about the... Um we are the fallen angels We fell down very far Angel just means messengers But look, I don't want you to walk off just yet I want to finish this verse, finish that verse up. Read it again from the top And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Now Israel is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans In the Americas and scattered to the four corners of the earth And the question that's being asked Is what does God require of you? What's your name, bro? Tyrus. Tyrus. All right. And your name, my brother? Sam. Sam. Tyrus and Sam. Right? Those are the names that were given to you here in America. Right. But the name that God gave you is Israel. Right. And y'all are so-called black men. They call you African-American men. Right. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at this sign right here, the very top tribe in the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. in America, they call them American blacks. Right. That's me. But God doesn't call me an American black. God calls me an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's right. The mightiest and greatest tribe that God created. The same tribe that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, came from. And as an Israelite, this is what the Bible says God requires of me. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul uh -huh. to keep the commandments of the Lord. Y'all hear that? God requires that we keep his what, Tyrus? His commandments. His commandments. That's what we have not been taught here in America. We've been taught to break God's commandments. Whoever had collard greens with some, some, uh, some pork in it? We can't consume pork according to the Bible. That's right. The Bible is our history book. Yeah, I, I see your, your face lit up like, yeah. oh, like, oh, we can't eat pork? Yeah, exactly. Nah, we can't eat pork. No. We cannot eat pork. Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Did you, did you grow up as a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I was raised up in the church. In the church, right? Yeah. And they serve pork in church, right? right. Exactly, right? right? But church, people in church are supposed to believe in who? The Lord. The Lord. What's his name? Jesus Christ, right? right, right. We're going to read what Jesus Christ said out of his own mouth. Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not, I am not come to destroy. So the, Christ out of his own mouth says, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. So if Christ didn't come to destroy the law, what did he, destroy, then? he didn't destroy anything. He going to tell you what he did. I'm going to read one more word. I'm going to tell you what he did. But my question to you, if Christ said he did not come to destroy the law, why don't Christians teach God's law? It's a good question, right? I'm going to give you the answer. Because Christians don't believe in Christ or the Bible. Christians believe in the so-called white man and his philosophy, ideology, theology. That's what Christians believe in. 
Because Christ just told us that they, Say it again That they not that I have come to destroy the law. So if I really believe in Christ, what would I think about the law? Huh? Now I would think about it. My thought about it would be that it's not done away with. Read it again. They not that I am come to destroy the law. If I believe in Christ, I would think that the law has not been destroyed. I would think that the law still stands even to this day. If I believed on Christ. But if I don't believe on Christ, what would I think? I would think that the laws have been done away with if I don't believe on Christ. Read on. Or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ said he came to fulfill the law. But what does that mean? What was your name one more time? Sam. Sam. What does it mean for Christ to have fulfilled the law? Now, well, we, well, we know. Now, it's not a whole lot. It's just one simple thing. Now, Christianity just Christianity teaches us that fulfill means to destroy the law. That fulfill means that we don't have to keep the law anymore. But Christ just said, "Think not that I come to destroy the law." So, isn't that confusing? That's very confusing, right? Because Christianity is full of confusion. That's what I was like, "Yo, hold on." Right, right. So look, we're going to break it down, make it real plain what it meant for Christ to fulfill the law. All right? Give me Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. By the mouth of all his prophets. All the prophets wrote about Christ. Him coming and having to die for the nation of Israel. Having to die for my brother Sam. Him having to die for my sisters getting out the car, going into the store. Christ had to die for my brother right here with the hat. You know Christ died for you, my brother? What do he look like? Huh? What'd he say? He don't know. Hey, look, my brother, let me read one scripture to you since you don't know. All right, I'm going to let you hear it while you walk away. All right, hold that. Give me Revelation 1 and 14. Because, look, my brother, many times on television... They give us an image of Jesus Christ, but the image doesn't match up with the writings in the book that we use to learn about Jesus Christ. Right. We use the Bible to learn about Jesus Christ. Am I right or wrong? Right. I'm right. So let, let's let the Bible tell us what Jesus looked like. Right. Read what you got. Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. I want, I want you, my sister, according to Revelation 1 and 14, remember that, all right? Read what you got. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ got to be revealed to our people because he's been hidden behind the so-called white man. The so-called white man hid the true image of Christ. Read on. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs. So Christ got a head and he got hairs because he walked this earth, right? Let's see what that head and hairs look like. We're white like wool. White like what? Like wool. Who got woolly texture hair on this earth? <laughs> Ain't nobody. Huh? I don't think nobody got no nobody wool. got woolly textured hair. No, you know? You, do you know the texture of wool? Yeah, of a wool like like a real wool, right? Wool is like thick, curly, kinky. Yeah. You ever seen an afro before? Yeah, I seen that. What what kind of hair is that? That's, that's, that gotta be the wool That's that wool. <laughs> Look at my brother right here. <laughs> okay, I see. You see my brother right there? Yeah, I see what you said. Christ had hair on his head that looked just like my brother right there. All right. That's what the Bible just said. Now I'm going to ask you again. What people on earth got hair that look like this brother right here? <laughs> that's African. African American, so-called African Americans. Right, right, right. We're not Africans. We're not Africans. They took us from Africa. But we are not Africans. We were in Africa for a long time. But we are not Africans. Right, right. You understand the difference? Yes. Like, your citizenship is America, right? Yeah. Are you originally from America? Yeah. No, you're not. Your ancestors do not come from this place. We were brought to this place as slaves. By example, nation is 
FM. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.